what this exhibition documents, the psychedelic sensibility is a certain kind of color and light and space as reflected in the art that we see in the show. This is the first show that looks at this development within the context of contemporary art and as an aesthetic sensibility specifically. In a sense, it's a show that looks at style the way Cubism did. This exhibition was inspired by the painting I'm standing in front of. I saw this painting and I literally said to myself, that's the most psychedelic Stella I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of Frank Stella's work over the years, so this sort of blew me away. Then I looked at the label and I saw, oh my God, he painted this in 1968, which is right at the height of the psychedelic era. So this is the way a curator's mind works. And I next started thinking of other artists uh, who have made work with what I would call a psychedelic sensibility. You start working with ideas that are your own and it, after a while you create your own little world. It was very exciting just to see that, you know, I had a foundation for something and then I went out and researched it and saw that, wow, it's much bigger than I anticipated. This particular exhibition makes people feel good. I mean, it's just, it's the nature of this positive energy that the color and the light of the art seems to put out. And, you know, I can cheer up somebody with an exhibition. I tell people, if you're having a bad day, come sit in the George Cisneros exhibition. You'll feel a lot better. Just come in and spend 15 minutes um, absorbing yourself in the beauty and, and kind of just visceral, oral, uh, sensual quality of that experience. be invited to participate with some of these artists. It's, it's been a great experience. It puts a lot of context in, into who I am and, and where I've been and the community that I'm a, I'm a part of. Most people don't uh, realize that I'm an epileptic. And between 1970 and about 1979 were the worst times of my, of my epilepsy. And Everybody thinks that this is a psychedelic movement that, that I'm doing, but actually I see these pieces as autobiographical and they're very narrative. They're very literal, because this is what was going on in, in my head, uh, the way my mind was processing sound and light are depicted in these pieces. The entire suite of pieces is entitled Cascades of Jubilation, just the waves and waves of bliss that come. Uh, it's called Bon Voyage Sonambulating de Pylon, which has a lot to do with waking and sleeping. And the piece that is actually has a lot to do with the conscious and, and subconscious. And it's actually like I, I did put on the on the cell phone recording that it has, you know, a direct link to uh, the character of Master Blaster in the uh, the Mel Gibson movie uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. The best thing I've ever heard from someone, and this is really the why I build these pieces, is that I really want to impact the mind of the viewer enough to uh, create like a future memory. So when they go out in, in time and space and through their daily lives, that something on this piece will, will remind them of this piece and create a direct a direct reference to this piece. And the best part, the best one I've I've ever heard was someone wrote a short 
Just a really short, like one paragraph. It may have even been on a blog or something someplace. I went to a party and I saw a disco ball and I immediately thought of Richie Butt's work. <laughs> so that was, for me, that was, that was gold, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, obviously, you know, the name Psychedelic has that um, ring to it. It's, it's a user-friendly name. It's uh, people know, or at least they all have some idea of what the term means. And so hopefully they'll be curious enough to want to come to a museum and, uh, and see what that's all about. We have a cell phone tour. We have more than two-thirds of the artist's voices, you know, talking about their work. Stop number 15. We asked Constance Lowe to talk about her art. I hope that as you listen to this, that you're also really looking at all of the work, relying on your eyes more than your ears. The terms optical and visionary that subtitle this exhibition refer to two different kinds of seeing. One is the physical operations of the eye and brain in response to the physical world, and the other the interior visual imaginings of the human psyche. My work embraces both physical and psychological phenomena to explore visual perception and the agency of color. Here's Albert Alvarez giving us a tour of karma and death pervade my consciousness. Well, here we go, a uh, guided tour. For me, I think I want to describe like good energy and negative energy, positive and negative. The imagery comes from all kinds of places. found that once somebody understands what it's about, they no longer fear it or hate it. You know, there's too many people that say, oh, a child could have done that, or, you know, what's that about, you know. The curator's job is to present it in a way that's um, user-friendly. So I hope we've done that to the best we can. Matisse would always say art should be like sitting in an easy chair. Well, Taft goes beyond that. Art should make you feel the ex sublime. It should make you feel ecstatic. And you'll see this one is very, very optical. When you engage in it, you see all the forms start to morph. See here, of course, we've got psychedelic color, psychedelic space. Ideas are floating around like little vignettes and all aspects of what's going on in this young guy's mind. It's in the tradition of Hieronymus Bosch, only what Bosch would be painting if he were living in the 21st century. Okay, let's start right here with Mark Hoganson, then we're going to move in that direction. We have great artists in San Antonio, and we're in a very exciting time uh, to be an artist in San Antonio. I remember being influenced in drawing by uh, 60s comic books, uh, Crumb, and uh, the fabulous Furry Freak Brothers. Those were some of my favorite comic books and art books when I was very young. I also had posters, rock posters, a lot of classic rock, which had a lot of psychedelic imagery on them. I'm a narrative painter, a storyteller, but uh, my new work has, is, is more of an experiment in color and contrast. I love creating optical illusions with my paintings. Uh, I think that's what uh, uh, psychedelic work, uh, how it, it intrigues me, how it interests me. It's my pleasure to introduce Potter Belmer Labs, Leslie Raymond and Jason J. Stevens. As Potter Belmer Labs, Leslie and Jason have been collaborating together for over 10 years, making installation art and video art, and since 2001, live cinema. When we were invited to perform for Psychedelic, we wanted to make a whole new piece for it. But we really focused on trying to convey a, a psychedelic experience, take people on a, a certain journey. There were certain thing, decisions that we made specifically because we wanted it to be part of the, the larger conversation of the show. Leslie is manipulating the image and I'm manipulating the sound. The computers could be connected so that the image and sound uh, play off each other automated, but we don't connect them. 
I think it's human nature to to try to create meaning and while we have structured the performance um, to have a narrative kind of flow I think everybody is going to bring their own meaning to it and their own associations and and we want the work to be open-ended enough so so that people can project their themselves and reflect themselves inside of it. I kind of take stuff that's out there existing and I alter it a little bit. You know, this is most of the stuff is just like out of a box and I alter it a little bit and then turn it into something else that makes me more interested. It's, I mean, the strobing aspect of, and kind of, quote unquote, psychedelia. Um, this very optical visual effect. I mean, that was what I was looking at, was this kind of glowing that I was creating with the video. And, uh, and I liked it a lot. Where at some point, you would have six images on six monitors and they would be switching on and off. So at some point, theoretically, you could see all the same six of the six figures at once. Now, I've never seen all six at once. I've seen four, but you know, theoretically it's possible. So that's sort of, there's an idea of the art piece as a game. Here, I've taken the, you know, the old masters, the, the artists who pioneered this, all really great artists, all in museums, you know, artists who, who really shaped this development. And they were in one room, and the room just comes alive with color and light, and you feel the heat, you feel the warmth, you feel the glow. Here's artist Fred Tomaselli. I like to think that I rearranged the use value of my substances. Encapsulated in tamper-proof resin, these chemical cocktails can no longer reach the brain through the bloodstream and must take a different route to altering perception. In my work, they travel to the brain through the eyes. By mixing real objects with photographed and painted ones, I try to blur the boundaries between them. Stop number nine. Number nine? Number nine? My name is Robert Williams. I'm supposed to be talking about some psychedelic situation in reference to a painting. The painting is named The High Lord Solver of Puzzledom painting was made in the 80s, and it depicts a godlike figure putting together a puzzle, and everything in the background of the picture is made out of puzzle pieces. The sky, the clouds, the ground, everything is made out of puzzle pieces, and this godlike figure is putting together a puzzle. This is all very psychedelic. Of course, that led me into thinking about um, the healing aspect of art, which of course is the main uh, one of the main points of the art of Alex Gray, who's prominently featured in the show. ...with our esteemed guest, Alex Gray. I try to put uh, images of trauma in relationship to a... Uh, a, a context of healing. That would be uh, the, uh, that's why I like this painting. It is, uh, something happens, it's sequential art. It goes from uh, a more repressed, uh, and, and in psychedelic literature, it would be birth perinatal matrix number two. So this, this is a lot not only about death, uh, and transcendence, but it's also about birth into a new being. And this is uh, what I think psychedelic uh, experience is about. It's about the dawn of a uh, new way of being uh, that is in connection with the uh, soul and spirit and uh, the web of life and reverences that. And uh, that's what I think the true value of it is. And that's why I'm so grateful that you've created a show like this and a context where people can think about these things in relationship to art and life. And 
I've written about artists before who are very interested in the healing potential of art. But now I'm surrounded by a, a group of paintings that ha, you know, really are about energy. You know, we see the, what we call optical mixing when colors mix and they create new, new colors. So you know, that takes place before our eyes and when you see it in mass like that in a contained space, you know, it's, it's contained energy that has a healing potential to it. James Cobb, Mark Hoganson, Constance Lowe, Ray Rapp, who's come here to be with us from New York, Alex Rubio, and Michael Villaquette, who's come here from Wisconsin. Um, you guys are phenomenal. I'm so privileged to document your work. So a big round of applause for the artists. Shows like this are so great because they bring people together, and art is that vehicle that unites us. So now I'm thinking about the viewer and the interconnectivity of the viewer to the painting or, or the sculpture, whatever the art object is. And suddenly, you know, there's, it opens up a whole, hopefully new dialogue for us about what is the purpose of art? What is the potential of art? How can art engage the viewer? And what's the value of arts engaging the viewer? So here I am, you know, a curator for 30 years, and now I have this whole new turf to, um, stimulate me and others and you know to to explore to learn so we never stop learning and as a curator I mean this show has been a great education for me and can, continues to be uh, as I live with it and uh, and I'm thrilled to be able to share it with others and and uh, hopefully we all come together around art and that's because art is a powerful thing in museums we play a role in that museums are places for dialogue and you know art just kind of is the, the, the vehicle. It's like the art is a conduit. And through the art, hopefully, we learn more about ourselves. <laughs>